Hello everyone, welcome back to Lunarman. My name is Looney. It's time for One Piece chapter 1118. I'll give you my Looney thoughts. I've already read the chapter. Um, usually, um, I don't work on Thursdays, but during the summer, I technically do. So I don't have a chance to actually, um, you know, tell you all my thoughts, record this video <clears throat> when the chapter releases. But hopefully, you still come by and watch this video. And um, let us begin because it is, um, I have been around x.com i've been around social media and i know a lot about the controversy that has happened i'm gonna give you my take on the whole thing um but um uh, let's go briefly through um the rest of the chapter before we get to the real big controversial part and um let us start with the cover page story the next part volume eight of yamato um you know starting uh, the pilgrimage and yamato setting off great awesome and um, there's a lovely picture of Yamato eating food as they set off towards their pilgrimage to do whatever it is that um, Kinemon and um, Momonosuke told Yamato to do. So we move on and we see the giant, the iron giant falling into the water. Now, I don't know if anyone has seen my video um, regarding the uh, D clan about there is a D um, a former someone who was part of the is the D clan who is I think uh, members of Joe Boy's former crew who essentially you know there was one that betrayed Joe Boy. If you want to check out that video, you could click on the link below. The link to that video will be down below. Or if you want to wait until the end, it will be available to for you to choose at the um, you know the end screen. So, and their name was Mike. Like this just further proves more of my theory that there is a traitor amongst, or was a traitor amongst you know um, Joe Boy's crew, and that's why he fell. That's what led to his downfall. And this just helps more, you know give it more validity because it, it's very it's it's weird that he's specific Vegapunk is specifically talking about someone in the D clan right it's specifically towards them as if he's trying to warn them about something or trying to tell them about something now I could be completely wrong right it could be something totally different I just think that in real I think that for me personally my theory uh, I believe my theory more which you know Theories, that's what theories are. But I'm I'm not opposed to being wrong. I'm not opposed to it being something else. So, But I like to think that this um, helps more with my theory. And uh, that's fantastic. So again, if you want to check out that theory, you could uh, click on the link below or wait until the end screen to, uh, you know, check it out yourself. So the Iron Giant then starts sinking. The um, recording gets cut off because of, you know, the water. And um, it seems like... The dead Mushi either gets shut off or is drowning with the Iron Giant. And uh, the Iron Giant starts speaking. Where are you? Where did you go? Joe Boy, I wanted our paths to cross. You were here, right, Joe Boy? How strange. How very strange. So to me, th th this tells me that the Iron Giant actually didn't know Joe Boy. But there is some sort of connection with Joe Boy that I think um, probably has something to do with like some sort of memory um thing and um it would it would be very interesting to learn a little bit more lore about this iron giant especially because it apparently climbed um towards mary um mary joyce uh 200 years ago so it's a, i do want to learn more about it um hopefully we do see something else with the giant and um which i think we will i think he'll be very key in helping the stride escape that's the old i think that's the main plot thing in regards to the iron giant that's going to happen the crew is going to be, you know, you know, close to um, escaping, and then the girls I uh, come after them, and Dying Giant pops up again, and you know, helps them escape. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Anyway, moving on, we now see uh, the giant boar. I, I keep forgetting the girl size name. I don't, you know, I apologize, but I don't remember their names. <laughs> My brain is just all mush, especially since I've been at work all day and just. I'm sorry that I can't remember the goddamn names. But the boar is coming after, um, I think th I think it's headed towards where Luffy and Co. are. I, I can't tell whose ships those are. They do look like, I don't know, I can't tell. And then we had something going on. So now we're going to see more, uh, more people around the world getting more reactions. We see Koza. Uh, we see... Um, uh, what? Shock! What the hell is his name? Oh, 
the hell's his name? He was partnered with Miss Wednesday. Mr. Monday? No. No, it wasn't even no, it would be Monday. Oh, Mr. Six. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I just. Uh, my memories for, sure, for a lot of the characters are so bad. I can recognize faces. I can't re remember names. I'm so sorry. Uh, but then we move on to Leo and Rebecca. So Leo, for some reason, thinks that it was Luffy, but Rebecca's just like, oh, come on. I love Rebecca's expressions. Fucking. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> come on. Are you seriously thinking Luffy would actually do something like that? Like, come on. Come on. Now we have York, so the girls are talking to York about wanting to remove the rest of the Vegapunks, which makes sense because um, have, keeping any of the Vegapunks alive might ruin or might let them continue whatever it is that Vegapunk was working on, whatever Vegapunk's message was, you know, all that stuff. So they want to get rid of all the Vegapunks so that, you know, York is the only one standing and York is on their side. Um... Lilith's still up on the stratum and that is down at the northeast coast. Shall we eliminate? Yes, punk rate appears to have program to function and go to the cells of our mission. We can benefit from the, from it through York. The other two geniuses are nothing but loose ends. <laughs> loose ends. Uh, I don't think they are loose ends. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't like really give a damn or like wouldn't go after them. I do think they are important. And um, I think they, they have to get rid of them from just the threat that they can um that they can be towards them and the world government um but york would definitely be just you know with the world government and york could definitely continue whatever it is you know with the mother flame and stuff like that so set sail let's get out of here so it looks like luffy um uh dory and Brogy have arrived on the ship they're setting sail everyone's happy so this is a giant ship it's so huge where's what's up is in here what about chopper frankie and sanji meet dory and Brogy? Uh, yeah, I do, I do wish Usopp and Chopper were here. That, that would have been a great reaction for them to have, so that's fantastic. Damn it all, chase them down. There's no way we can let them escape when we have this many battleships. The giants are tough. So, Bonnie apparently changed Vice Animal Doll and Vice Animal Bluegrass to Children Form, which is going to be very important for something I will discuss later about the whole, the whole controversy and stuff like that that people are really upset over. Uh, people are just mindlessly going ape shit about it. Uh, but I'll give you my thoughts on it. Um, whether you like it or dislike it, you know, it's up to you. You're free to do either. Um, yeah, so Bonnie's, you know, being, uh, you know, like, she's smirking. <laughs> That's great. Sanji's here, too. We successfully set off. Nami, how's it looking up there? Um, their committee came with Nami, with the rest of them up there. Nami, yes. Always, always great to see Nami in the chapter. Um... We'll be able to launch into the ocean thanks to Edison, but we may need you guys to help us land safe, safely. Uh, there's that joke about Sanji rescuing only the ladies. Everyone else was just like, ah, who gives a shit? Uh, it's a gag. That's fine. Something's coming from above the island. Then we have the huge-ass fucking bird. It's one of the elders. It's one of the Gorosai. Uh, Luffy's eating, which, again, a lot of people are not. Uh, th there's some people who are, are kind of upset about it, but... It is what it is. Luffy gains his, gains most of his stamina and strength back from just eating. It's it's a thing that always happens. When when something continuously always happens, people tend to hate it because it just makes it like oh Luffy just if Luffy's tired, all he needs to do is eat eat some meat and then let, he can have the battle continue. You know, some people don't like that. Some people want him to lose or like you know have him defeated just so that you know there's some stakes, some tension. Um, like, I love steak and tension. I do think One Piece should have a little bit more steak and tension. But not if it disregards some things that have continuously always happened. Right? Uh, protect the little people. Dory Bargy. Who? Uh, no, that's not Dory Bargy. That is... Uh, those are new characters. Uh, Bjorn and Sig. Great names. Put out the flames. We can't set, let this sell. Is that, is that a bird monster? You know... Uh, the elders attacking, you know, they're, they're defending themselves. Another earthquake. All right, my bell is full. Let's go. So Luffy essentially becomes Nika again. Uh, no way is what what he heard of the sea level is still rising. Um, is that Luffy? No, another earthquake. Who? That's the thing. I don't know who that is. Is that Nika? Is that Luffy doing it, or is it somebody else? Interesting. I don't. I, uh, it's another earthquake. Another earthquake. Is it? Is it? Is it Luffy's? You know the drum beats. Is it Luffy like doing the drum beats and that that's causing the earthquake? I don't. 
this is the one thing I don't know what it is. I can't tell what it is. Dun do to to. It does look like it is Luffy because of the uh, SFX sounds that Oda put there. So it does seem like it's Luffy doing that, and it will make sense because of the whole thing where he could change things to rubber and stuff like that. And you know he can manipulate or make water rubber. Uh, making water rubber is interesting, but I think it's the sound of it, of the drum beats that are causing you know the earthquake. No way is what we heard true. Are the sea levels really still rising? This is bad. Interesting. Bonnie. Wow. Nika. Again, I have no idea who you're talking about. It's like a festive beat. So it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that explains. Ah, oh. Again, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. It's been a long day at work. Um. But can't we can't both answer on like this? Black was gonna put out the fires. Gaba ba ba. It's so fun. The Giants just dancing along with um, Luffy and the and the you know drums of liberation. It's it's always great. Come on, don't you want to blow these guys out of the water? I couldn't keep keep up with you in that form. Of course you can. I don't know how your power works, but I'm sure you've got this. Oh, that's just how I look when I'm totally free. Distorted future. Give me a future where I'm totally free. Kuma. I I have. It, it warms my heart because Kuma has suffered so much and I, and like I really hope Kuma sees exactly what is happening with Bonnie um, essentially looking like Luffy looking like Gear 5 looking like um, Nika and this is literally the biggest controversy of this chapter has left a lot of people divided some people saying an ass pool some people saying um, bad writing you know that kind of stuff uh, some people not happy you know calling a Mickey Mouse like Disney uh, esque BS, you know. Um, and Die Giant again woke up because, again, Luffy um, turned to Gear 5, so it, it, since it's probably nearby, Die Giant probably heard the drum beats of Luffy. There you are. So now Die Giant's probably gonna come out and try to find Luffy, which I hope we get to see. And like I said before, more than likely, Die Giant is gonna help Luffy and the others escape by holding off the elders. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the communication. Well, the communication between Luffy and the Iron Giant. I, I do think they will um, essentially just talk with another. Or maybe not. Uh, it doesn't look like... I mean, the Iron Giant looks like he landed at the depths of the sea. Um, but I do think he will rise. Will they have a conversation? I kind of hope they do because it, it will give you a little bit more lore on essentially what exactly the Iron Giant's connection with Joe Boy is because, you know, the Iron Giant's is not, you know, at all, um, you know, what we do know about him is that from the, from earlier is that, you know, he always wanted to cross paths, which means they never met before, but he knows about the lore of Joe Boy, almost as if, like, the Iron Giant heard tales or, like, there's information within the Iron Giant that is essential to, you know, uh, Joe Boy and uh, Nika as well. So it will be very interesting to see if they ever have or if they do have interaction. I really hope they do. So now let's talk about this because a lot of people are like really broken, like really just like they don't know how to feel. Um, I I understand um, disappointment. I understand I understand both sides essentially. I understand why some some people don't like it, I understand why others do like it, right? Um, here's my take on it. Most of the reasoning as to why people don't like it is because they believe that Bonnie's fruit essentially created another Gear 5, another, you know, uh, another Nika clone or a copy where they just wanted Luffy to just be that, right? That's one reason why people are disliking this. Um, that... Essentially, Luffy worked hard to get to Gear 5. Luffy worked hard, you know, he literally apparently died to then revive himself as in Gear 5. And that all of a sudden, Bonnie gets it because of her devil food power. It just seems like very, you know, Mickey Mouse as Disney-esque. And it's just like, I personally do not see that because of a few things. Bonnie's devil food doesn't necessarily, from my understanding from reading back, from reading, you know, information, reading from the wiki, um, about just a short, uh, but just, not what they think the, um, Devil Fruit does, but just like, you know, what essentially Bonnie's Devil Fruit kind of is. And I think a lot of people don't understand that th this was definitely foreshadowed. This was definitely like, you know, pre, pre, um, you know, foreshadowed into becoming, this is essentially the payoff 
to everything that has happened between Bonnie, Kuma, Ginny, where, you know, they always believed in, you know, the sun god, uh, sun god Nika. So it's like, this is essentially the payoff that she, uh, she became Nika and um, she became free. Because Kuma's, Kuma and Ginny's life was full of slavery. Ginny was captured by the Celestial Dragons, tortured, R-worded, right? And her becoming like her superhero. I, I've seen um, a fellow YouTuber, Drago, talk about... Um, no, not Drago. Uh, Drago what's it? Uh, BD Law, I think it was. Who had, a, who had a good take on it. It's essentially Bonnie, um, I, uh, who idolized a superhero all of a sudden... You know, be, kind of became that superhero. She, she, it's like it's like people who, you know, kind of want to be Spider Man and, and you know, want to at least you know experience what it's like to be Spider Man to be like their hero, right? It's essentially something like that. You know, Bonnie saw Nika Gear Five, you know, as a hero, and she essentially is living that dream, that reality, that distorted future, right? And I think that's a good take. I think that that's a very wholesome take. Alongside with the emotional aspect behind Kuma's backstory about slavery and, and you know him the Buccaneers and him always believing in you know uh, Nika right so here's here's where my my thoughts go to she is not in gear five she is not gonna have rubber property she's not going to do things that Luffy can do now I could be wrong. Like, my opinion on this is... I, I, my full opinion on this will be slated for later in the next couple of chapters to see where Oda goes with this. Um, and, right? And I think a lot of people assume that because of this, she is going to be, you know, similar in strength, similar in power, similar... Have similar properties, similar devil food abilities like Luffy does. And another reason why people dislike this is because, you know, Luffy should be the only one doing this, right? Here's the thing with Bonnie's Devil Fruit. It is, it's the age age fruit, right? The thing that I found weird about the whole thing is that it does change people's ages, but it keeps the memories, keeps the, um, essentially the, uh, essentially the thoughts, you know, even the, you know, even the bodily scars and stuff like that, right? It does age people. You know, like we saw earlier with the uh, uh, doll and bluegrass. But I think one of the biggest things it does is that it changes the appearance. Which is why she's able to essentially become or transform into into like a similar look as Luffy. Because it's all based on the appearance. Right? If in some distorted future she, she probably ate the, um, you know... The fruit that Luffy has. And she would essentially become like Nika. But her ability doesn't allow her to copy the Devil Fruit abilities. It doesn't seem like that's a thing because we don't see it um, ever happening. So it could still be a thing. I'm not saying it won't be a thing. But it doesn't seem like that's what her Devil Fruit ability does. She's able to transform or age people, um, you know, in appearance. But not internally, their mind their devil fruit ability she's not able to copy them and she's able to distort the future into someone with a devil fruit it doesn't seem that way it doesn't it doesn't look like oda's trying to make bonnie similar to luffy but giving her the ability the distorted future where uh she's able to take on the appearance now she is also part buccaneer so it's possible that a lot of like the big giant stuff that she does is essentially Buccaneer stuff, right? And she wish where, where there's a distorted future where she actually inherits more of Kuma's genes and becomes more of a Buccaneer, uh, which is why I don't think it's going to be anything like Lu an actual second Luffy. It's just a, it's just an appearance, and it w it won't scale at all with how strong Luffy is. It won't make it won't feel like Luffy is essentially going to be. Like, oh, uh, because this is another thing that I see constantly, is that you might as well just remove Luffy as the MC with, when you could just have Bonnie become Nika, right? But that's not her, how her Devil Fruit works. She can't copy, you know, Devil Fruits. If she did, she could have just copied Kuma's fruit, right? With the Pawpaw fruit and try to, 
you know, send the Gorosai away, but she did not do that. Probably because she can't copy the Devil Fruit ability. She could copy the appearance, but not the ability. And, um, you know, it does look like she is floating in that one pit, in that one panel down at the bottom, kind of like how Luffy is doing it. Um, yeah. It, it just seems like it won't be at the same effect because Luffy also has like hockey and stuff like that. And she's not going to be strong. She, there's a limit to how long she can stay in that form. She's, she's, she's 12. She, her, her, the power is all based on her imagination. As she gets older, she's not going to be able to be as imaginative as she is as a child. The reason why Luffy's so imaginative in a lot of his double food abilities is because he's essentially a kid at heart, right? He's essentially creative. We've seen him being creative in fights so many times. And a lot of it is because of his childlike wonder. His childlike, you know, ideologies. And like, you know, th that kind of stuff. And that's why he's very imaginative. That's why he's able to do like all this stuff with Gear 5. Bonnie might not be as imaginative as Luffy. We might not see this form for long. And it's also just like, you know... It just, just seems like it won't do anything. Now, she could possibly, you know, as she gets older, get stronger. But the more she, um, the more she doubts, the more she doesn't believe in, like, um, the idea that she is Nika, right? The more she, it, it's not the more, but it's less likely she'll ever turn into this again. Right now, she believes that she can become because of what Luffy said. But the more she realizes that, like Luffy is Nika, right? Or Joe Boy, or you know, the Sun God actually, the more her power diminishes. Which is why I think that when the Iron Giant appears, he'll specifically talk to Luffy. I don't think he will specifically um, look at Bonnie or recognize Bonnie as Nika because it. I think the Iron Giant will understand in some form or way that she is not actually, you know, Joe Boy. That. He will recognize Luffy as Joy Boy, but won't recognize, um, you know, Bonnie as Joy Boy, or you know, or in this case, Joy Girl, and that's what would diminish her ability. Why she will not be able to transform into this. Um, and if she comes out of this safely, that means that she will finally be free. This form is where I'm totally free. If she is free. That means that she will not be able to turn into this because her freedom, her finally being totally free, right, will be the reality she's currently in. And that will diminish completely her chances of turning into this form ever again. This is more than likely a one-time thing. Probably a few more times, but, but very, but it will start to diminish. And then all, the, all those people who are worried won't happen. It's, it's more than likely just something that Oda wanted to do because it was fun. You know, it was it was essentially giving you not only a payoff, uh, but also just giving like kids like because she is 12 years old. The, uh, you know, the dream, the hope of turning into their favorite superhero, like um, Law mentioned um, in, in his uh, stream. So I think that's essentially what is happening here. Uh, I'm a little all over the place. I understand that. I apologize for that. So I'll try to uh, give you a short summary of what I wanted to say. Bonnie is not Nika. She's not going to be Gear 5. She's not going to, you know, do a lot of things that Luffy is able to do. More than likely, this is mostly appearance. But it's she's not Nika. She's not going to be Joboy. She doesn't necessarily have the same properties as Luffy. We don't know what she's going to do. We'll save that for the next chapter. But she can't copy necessarily Devil Fruits. Um, at least what we have seen, she can't, right? So I don't see this being anything more than a one-time thing where the more she has doubts or the more that she believes that Luffy is Joy Boy, Luffy is Nika, the reality of one the reality of where she is Nika will disappear because she no longer believes that she can be that. And if she is able to escape from here, able to reunite with Kuma at some point and realize that she is now totally free, that reality where she says I'm totally free and she is Nika will disappear because she doesn't believe in that freedom as being totally free. Instead, the reality she's currently in when she does finally feel totally free will be the reality 
and she will no longer be able to turn into this into this form into this appearance because that's how her devil fruit works and the older she gets the more her imagination suffers or the more she sees luffy or maybe even the iron giant recognizes luffy as joe boy as nika and the fact that maybe the iron giant doesn't see bonnie as nika or joe boy at all then you know that could also harm her belief that she is and that would diminish her um in this form as well um so essentially that's why i think a, a, a lot of it is just blown out of a little bit proportion you're you have all the right to feel the way you do and i have no right to tell you how you should feel about certain things you can like it you can dislike it that's perfectly fine just like this video but i think that while there is you know foreshadowing for this at the end of the day it's not that big of a deal to worry about or big of a deal to assume that there will be two nikas from now on or bonnie will be able to turn other straw hats or other people into nika as well like in the final war where she uses her distorted future to essentially you know have all these goddamn sun gods going after the world government or whatever the final conflict is it's not i don't think it's going to happen because the more she believes that luffy is nika the more that she believes she is now totally free that reality that she is currently taking place will diminish and more than likely she doesn't have the stamina she doesn't have the time limit to actually stay in this form for long so that's also a big drawback of her devil for power and i think yeah it's just like i right now for me i want to wait until um the next coming chapters to really give like my opinion on it right now i don't hate it i like it more than i hate it but i understand why people can be upset about this i understand why right um i do think it's a little overblown but you know you are perfectly in your reason to dislike this as long as you have a valid reason for it if it's something to do with power scaling if it's something to do with the idea that um you know now there's two nikas and it devalues luffy in any sort of way then i feel like that seems a little bit you know going far off the trail because that's not what's happening here oda's not trying to create two nikas what he's doing is essentially giving bonnie a payoff um and giving them you know the straw hats and everybody else a chance to escape and eventually bonnie will lose the ability to transform into this because of how devil fool works i don't hate it so we'll see what happens um i can't wait to see the next chapter because i do want to see how the iron giant what the iron giant does next what oda does next with this former bonnie we see bonnie right here on, on one of the uh, lower panels that she is like doing the floating thing like luffy does right um so we'll see i do think um I do think it's it's not going to be in a situation where there's going to be another Nika running around. I think it's just going. I think it's just the payoff, the emotional payoff about Bonnie, who has always dreamed about, um, you know, the Sun God Nika, um, about her dad, about her mom, and all that stuff. And this is essentially a payoff and her being like her hero, being like the warrior of liberation to finally be free. And when she realizes that she is to she is totally free in the reality she currently you know exists in, this power, this form, this appearance, her going to this will no longer exist. So yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, again, sorry for the rambling. And uh, please comment, like, and subscribe. And um, thank you so much for watching and just listening to me babble about my thoughts about um, One Piece chapter one thousand one hundred eighteen. So. I'll talk to you guys later. See you. Have a great rest of the evening. Bye-bye.